Actor is speaking out again about the incident in which a four-year-old boy got into the gorilla enclosure, forcing a zoo emergency response team to shoot and kill the gorilla. This afternoon, Director Thane Maynard says the zoo stands by its decision and would make the same call today. The boy went over a barrier and through some bushes and then down into a moat. The silverback gorilla held the boy by the ankle and dragged him through the water, then up a ladder. Maynard says Harambe was disoriented and acting erratically, and the boy was in danger. That You can't take a risk with a silverback gorilla. They're very big, three times bigger than a man, six times stronger than that. This is a dangerous animal. Now, I know people see photos or videos say, gosh, it doesn't seem dangerous. We're talking about an animal with one hand that I've seen take a coconut and crunch it. Maynard says the zoo hopes to have the gorilla exhibit open by the weekend. Plans have been in the works to expand it in order to double the size. Planning for that will now include examining the barriers to see if they need to be upgraded. Today, everyone from animal rights activists to artists remembered the gorilla Harambe. They gathered outside the zoo at lunchtime today to honor the majestic 17-year-old who was a Cincinnati Zoo favorite. Local 12's Joe Webb has their stories. Long before the grainy images of Harambe the gorilla flooded the internet, digital artist Deb Menard had created a striking portrait of him. He had an imposing pose and he was a wonderful subject. His pre presence was amazing. Uh, he was dignified. He stayed still most of the time. He did walk around a little bit, but he was on guard. Menard created two digital paintings of Harambe in 2014. She is now donating one to the Cincinnati Zoo. When I saw the um, news item that Harambe uh, had been killed, uh, it just touched my heart. The gorilla's death has touched the hearts of people all over the world and lit up social media. This afternoon, a small crowd of animal rights activists gathered outside the zoo for an impromptu vigil. Kate Villanueva launched the Facebook page Justice for Harambe which already has 60,000 likes. I'm hoping that people will take away that this was a rare endangered animal and that his life was just as valuable as anyone else's and that it was a tragic situation and there might have been a better outcome. About a half hour after the vigil started, there were more supporters finally outnumbering the media who were here to cover the event. It was a peaceful event meant to honor the gorilla, not to fix blame. It was like a sidewalk wake with protest signs, some finger pointing, but not the point of the vigil. This is to remind people, let's keep the focus where it needs to be. That situation between the parents and the zoo will sort, it, sort itself out. All of us screaming about who is to blame is not going to fix problems. Or keep the little boy out of the gorilla habitat or bring back a popular zoo attraction. It was a tragic event that has touched a nerve and clouded a holiday meant to honor those who died for an honorable cause. In Avondale, Joe Webb, Local 12 News. The gorilla's death has also prompted a push to create Harambe's Law, a legislation which would assign legal and financial responsibility in situations like this. The Change.org petition for Harambe's Law already has more than 40,000 signatures. 